I assume. I assume. I assume. I assume as president of the Republic of South Africa. Opinion polls are now indicating that the ruling ANC might not enjoy the sweeping majority that it has seen since the party's inception in 1994. Once hailed as a symbol of liberation and unity, the African National Congress now navigates a challenging path. It's revealed that the ANC could lose its majority in the 2024 general election. As ruling parties often face a decline after achieving liberation, due to a combination of factors. In the most recent national election held in 2019, the African National Congress, the ANC, won 57.50% of the votes, a decline from previous elections. The biggest question in the upcoming South African 2024 election is whether the African National Congress will drop below 50% of the vote. South Africa's ruling ANC party, which has been in power since the end of apartheid, has acknowledged that it may lose its majority. I'm going to be president of this country, whether you like it or not. In this video, we'll look at how Gauteng, South Africa's economic powerhouse and the largest electoral bloc, has been undergoing significant demographic shifts over the past decade, largely driven by urbanization, migration, and the changing birth rate. These demographic changes are profoundly reshaping the political landscape of the province, and by extension, the entire country. As Gauteng becomes more diverse, with the growing population of young people and migrants from other provinces and countries, the traditional political dynamics are being challenged, setting the stage for a potential shift towards coalition politics at both provincial and national levels. Why could Gauteng have the answer to whether the African National Congress will drop below 50% of the vote? Well, in the past two South African elections between 2014 and 2019, the biggest change has been more people in Gauteng supporting and voting for the Economic Freedom Fighters EFF and Freedom Front Plus. When looking at this big map of Gauteng, you can see where people voted for the ANC in green dots and Democratic Alliance in blue dots in 2014 and 2019. ANC votes are mostly in townships like Mamilodi, while DA votes are mostly in suburban areas like Pretoria. There are some ANC votes in the suburbs and DA votes in townships, but not much change between 2014 and 2019. IFP votes in orange dots are in specific areas like in Soweto and central Johannesburg like Jeppe's Town along the industrial mining belt. These spots are hostels where IFP support has been strong among workers from KwaZulu Natal. The most significant change in the two maps is more support for EFF and Freedom Fund Plus. There are some black dots representing Freedom Fund Plus in areas that used to have mostly blue dots, the DA, like here in Vanderbilt Park. This is also noticeable in northern Pretoria, western parts of Johannesburg and around Fenacheng. Overall, there are more red dots representing the EFF, especially in townships. There are 16.1 million people living in Gauteng. The demographics on Gauteng province are changing. It shows that the number of 25 to 29 year olds in the province increased only marginally by 7% between 2011 and 2022. In Gauteng, the median age has risen from 27 years in 2011 and 30 years in 2022. This is higher than the South African median age of 28. This voting block is considered a bond freeze. This is a generation to grow up in post-apartheid South Africa. The first children born during a revolutionary time in South Africa and are now coming of age. The idea was that these young adults will be raised freely to live wherever and love whoever they wanted. They are now taking leadership positions across the country. For some, this reality is far from the truth. This data shows that Gauteng's population is younger, with a significant portion of the population being under 35 years old. There's a growing disconnect between the aspirations and priorities of the youth and all the generations of voters. Young people are often more open to alternative political ideas and less loyal to traditional party affiliations, and they're increasingly seeking representation that aligns with their concerns, which may not necessarily be addressed by mainstream political parties. A place to understand this voting bloc is Johannesburg, which remains a contradiction. It is an engine of both prosperity and inequality at different rates. Municipalities in South Africa are becoming more racially integrated, but South Africa's past still influences urban social structure. A study showed that Johannesburg is the least segregated. Common characteristics across cities include high percentages of black African residents in central business district, CBDs, and racially mixed neighborhoods in previously white majority areas.
Despite having made progress, South Africa still has a long way to go in achieving full integration. These maps show in a powerful way the patterns of racially integrated neighborhoods and segregation across South Africa's largest cities. This Johannesburg social tapestry, inspired by cartographer Bill Rankin, which is majority black. You can compare this with Cape Town social tapestry, which is majority colored. Half of South Africa's population lives in estimated 532 townships across the country, referred to as Egasi, derived from locuses in Afrikaans. Historically, these were underdeveloped, racially segregated urban areas that from the late 19th century until the end of apartheid were reserved for black Africans, Khalids, and Indians. About 150 billion rand in cash is spent at an estimated 150,000 spaza shops every year across South African towns, which contribute as much as 5.2% to South Africa's GDP and employ about 2.6 million people. Townships are usually built on the periphery of towns and cities. Johannesburg is home to some of the largest townships, including Soweto, Ivory Park, and Alexandra. These locations are the single largest block in South Africa. Alongside the complex dynamics of rural, urban, interprovincial migration, there's a population of 2.6 million people classified as illegal immigrants, including refugees and asylum seekers, particularly concentrated in Johannesburg. This reality underscores a multifaceted dilemma juxtapositioning the nation's history of political leaders who were seeking refuge abroad in exile with harsh realities faced by some vulnerable migrant groups across various South African communities. Gauteng, more specifically the city of Joburg, may be foreshadowing the future of South African national politics. As a reporter from the New York Times showed, now hiring a mayor of Joburg, with Bloomberg highlighting, Johannesburg has become such a mess that homeless people direct traffic, dysfunctional in facing a government crisis. Who is voting in Gauteng? Let's focus on one particular voter. Borrowing from an economic concept, we may consider the Gauteng voter the gap market voter. You may ask, what is the gap market? This means that households earning between 3,500 Rand and 9,000 Rand, with key public sector workers and laborers who are too rich to qualify for housing subsidy but too poor to afford a newly built house available on the market. This is the gap market. Data shows a staggering 73% of South Africans and below 6,000 Rand per month. This is the gap market. It is typically low-income people who mostly live in informal settlements and checks, or maybe renting. A question may arise from this. Does the African National Congress, the ANC, attract voters from all income? The vote for the ANC declined strongly with income in all elections held between 1994 and 2019. These voters' concerns extend beyond mere housing affordability, touching on the broader societal issues like income inequality, social justice, and economic mobility. They question government policies, seeking solutions that address the systematic barriers, preventing access to adequate housing. Additionally, they may fret about the living conditions and long-term implications for community development and economic growth. These groups would be considered the undecided voter, more open to alternative policies and visions from other political parties. The level of education can impact voting patterns Voters in Gauteng have some level of education with mostly incomplete secondary schooling and having achieved metric and tertiary education. Research has consistently shown correlations between education levels and voting behaviors. While education can influence voting patterns independently, it is also correlated with other demographic factors such as age, race, urban or rural residents, or which can influence voting behavior. For example, urban educated voters may lean towards more progressive or liberal candidates. The city of Joburg municipality had its sixth different mayor in 22 months in 2023. Amos Masondo served the longest term of any Johannesburg mayor for around 12 years. He resigned in 2011 due to health reasons. Mpo Pak Stau succeeded Masondo and served for almost five years. Things began to take a turn through a coalition government when the Democratic Alliance led by Heman Mashaba took office in 2016. Heman Mashaba, a businessman, resigned facing criticism for his policies. After Hamman Mashaba of the Democratic Alliance resigned, the ANC had three of its mayors in Johannesburg die in a span of 10 months. Geoff Makubo served as mayor of Johannesburg from August 10, 2021 until his death on September 18, 2021. 
Makubu passed away on July 2nd, 2021, a week after being admitted to hospital with COVID-19 complications. He was followed by Joladi Madongo until Madongo also passed due to a car crash on September 18th, 2021. Mpo Murane then took office until November 22nd, 2021. He was also injured in a car crash and passed away. Mpo Palate of the Democratic Alliance succeeded him until September 30th, 2022, when Dada Moremo resumed a brief period until October 25th, 2022 and served for about 25 days. On October 25th, 2022, the Johannesburg High Court ruled that both the council's decision to hold a motion of no confidence against Palace and the election of Dada Moremo were unlawful, unconstitutional and valid, and Palazzo was subsequently reinstated as mayor. Paul Palazzo returned and served a second term from October 26, 2022 to January 26, 2023. And Paul Palazzo was also asked as the city of Johannesburg mayor. She was removed in a vote of no confidence. Tapelo Ahmed became mayor of Joburg from January 27, 2023 to April 24, 2023. Then Gabelo Guamanda has been in office since May 5, 2023 representing the Al-Jamal party. Coalition governments can represent significant challenges, especially when ideologies of the participating parties differ. Parties may fundamentally differ with approaches to key issues such as economic policy, social welfare, and foreign affairs, making it difficult to find common ground and reach consensus on crucial matters. These are allocated parties in proportion to the number of votes received, as you can see here in Gauteng's electoral makeup. The provincial legislature consists of 73 members who are elected through a system of party list proportional representation with closed lists. This means each voter casts a vote for one political party and seats in the legislature are often filled by the members in accordance with the list submitted by the parties before the election. Like many major cities globally, Johannesburg remains a contradiction. It is an engine of both prosperity and inequality at different rates. In 2021, South African-based financial institutions managed more than 1.4 trillion US dollars in assets. The total market capitalization of Johannesburg Stock Exchange was 1.8 trillion US dollars by October 2021. On the other hand, there is dysfunction. Hijacked buildings have become a major problem in the city of Johannesburg, with more than 600 properties reported to be hijacked by criminals in the inner city alone. Estimates suggest that there were 57 known hijacked buildings in the CBD in Joburg alone. A devastating fire on August 2023 ripped through a hijacked building, tragically killing about 70 people trapped by locked security gates. In conclusion, the demographic shifts occurring in Gauteng, South Africa's economic powerhouse, and the largest electoral bloc, they are fundamentally reshaping the political landscape of the province and the nation as a whole. Urbanization, migration, and changing birth rates have led to a more diverse population, characterized by significant influx of young people and migrants from various regions and countries. These shifts are challenging traditional political dynamics and creating the conditions for potential transition towards coalition politics at both provincial and national levels. As Gauteng continues to evolve demographically, its political trajectory will likely be influenced by increasing complex and dynamic social fabric reflecting broader trends of change and adaptation in contemporary South African politics. If you really enjoy our content, consider subscribing to this channel and also supporting us through Patreon.